In this video, I ride the Nickel Plate Trail from Noblesville, Indiana to Fishers, Indiana. The trail starts at 8th and Pleasant in Noblesville and travels down to Fishers at approximately 96th Street. It hasn't reached quite to 96th Street yet, um, but the entire trail is supposed to continue down to the state fairgrounds at approximately 38th and Fall Creek in Indianapolis. There's also another part of the Nickel Plate Trail that is in northern Indiana and it runs between Rochester and Kokomo, Indiana. The, that section of trail is about 40 miles. Due to the heavy wind the day I rode the Nickel Plate, I'm having to do a voiceover so I do apologize this is the first time I've ever done one. Um, overall this trail it's pretty nice. The, the uh, Asphalt's incredibly smooth all the way down. Um, there seems to be quite a few road crossings that I'm not used to after riding on the Monon. Uh, so you have to keep an eye out just to make sure you're not going to be hit by cars crossing. Um, it's, it's kind of weird. Seeming it's like because it's such a wide path, people don't seem to keep to their side very well. Um, I think in the Noblesville section, it's about 12 feet across. And then it seemed like when it got down to Fishers, it got to be about 14 feet across. Um, so it's kind of funny that people do that. Um, in Noblesville, you start and you're passing a lot of residential. Um, then you'll start passing some of the factories, the old factories that have been there forever. It seemed like a lot of the trail was built up around or to support warehouses and factories so there's not a whole lot to see along it there there are obviously new subdivisions and stuff built up but overall it's there's not a lot to see hopefully in the future there will be a bunch of things that pop up around the trail um, in downtown fishers there is a section where it rides down below in a tunnel but above there's a train station in Fishers so around there there's bars and restaurants and things that you can go to um, in Noblesville you would have to travel further north to the downtown area but as you can see here we're again traveling by industrial stuff and then empty farmland to the right or stuff that's going to become a subdivision I do see a lot of cyclists on the trails. Um, for some reason, I seem to be the only e-bike that I see, well, I see myself a lot, <laughs> anyways. Um, it seems to be the only e-bike that I see regularly is me. Um, every once in a while, I'll see one or two up here um, in the Midland Trace area. In Noblesville, right before I got to this trail, I ran into another e-bike rider. Um, and he was trying to get onto the uh, Riverwalk Trail. But as you can see, like any rail trail, there's a lot of woods around it. So, at least in between the sections of houses and industrial buildings. The wind this day was pretty bad. I mean, you can see on the Speedo that I'm running 20 miles an hour for the most part. And then I was running head on into the wind. And I believe that day it said it was supposed to be seven mile an hour winds, but it sure seemed like a lot more than that. So. But riding the Juliet, it seems to handle that kind of speed pretty well. I don't notice any kind of issues you know, other than high wind, but that's any kind of unprotected vehicle. The uh, 
blue dots that you see passing, those are mile uh, markers on the trail. The closest one I saw to Noblesville was like an eight mile one. So it might be slightly longer than eight miles through the Hamilton County section. I'm not sure where Fisher's ends. Fisher might end at 96th Street and then Marion County would begin going further south. I know many of you mentioned that riding e-bikes you sometimes get pretty foul looks and what have you. I don't seem to get that. I, I always say hello and what have you to people as I'm passing by um, and always have a smile. So I don't seem to have any issues with people or maybe it's just the people I come across. But they always seem to be friendly and a lot of people are interested in the bike because for one, it's large and looks closer to a motorcycle than a bicycle or some mix between. In looking up information for this trail, it was kind of interesting that when they were building it, they were offering the homes that are backed up against it. To, if they wanted privacy, they would actually give grants of $2,000 a piece to who would build either fences or, or landscaping in order to prevent, you know, the view of the trail. Um, so it's kind of curious that they would provide that. They also would they required special uh, oh, permits to build gravel uh, gravel paths to meet up to the trail from their homes or, or what have you. Along the Monon you'll see a bunch of apartment complexes and things that have nearly immediate access to the Monon Trail so that's obviously a huge selling point to the apartment complexes and new residences that are built. I think you'll probably see as time comes on is that these factories and things will start to disappear. They'll build up new residences and then those factories and things will move further out east. But I believe Fishers is the uh, wealthiest town in Indiana and hence Hamilton County, Indiana. Um, and I'm not sure where my town, Westfield, and the town just south of me, Carmel, is. Pretty high. I found these guys, the bicyclists, pretty curious because they were hogging the entire thing pretty much, and then one was about to pass another and didn't seem <laughs> to want to get out of the way. But what have you. To the left, you see the uh, the building with the docks on the side you can tell those used to be rail lines that would come up up against the actual back of those buildings and then they would unload or load uh, freight trailers so this little jog was interesting you have to have run down like what, two blocks down to this light and then cross down there um, it makes it slightly safer. I would assume that they're going to build some kind of crossing directly there at the trail sometime. But this intersection at 146th, and I can't remember the name of this one, it was uh, Harriman or Harriman. Um, it gets pretty busy around rush hour and lunch times. There's a state highway there ahead to the left that's. Uh, Highway 39, and then it runs down to I-69 and Interstate Highway. I used to be a truck st truck driver, so I kind of know the area to some degree. But.
riding the Juliet here, this bike, it is just a huge difference from my old Curry e-bike. The old Curry e-bike has a 250 watt motor and it's just super slow and hard to pedal. Um, it's less than half the weight of the Juliet, but it's there's such a huge difference between the motor sizes. And being able to zip around at 20 miles an hour, you know, it makes getting to places easier, makes getting errands done easier. It makes getting to see trails like this a lot easier. This day that I did this was 38 miles, and I don't think I've ever spent that many miles on a bicycle ever. But that gives me hope to go see things in Indianapolis and hopefully take videos and let you guys see all of that stuff. But here's the, this is the trail portion that's in Fishers. So it does seem to be significant, or well, a bit wider, at least in the Noblesville portion. So I think it is 14 feet. So hopefully they will start sticking bollards and things that really prevent cars from coming on the trail. I mean, I, I see a few there that are the fold down style, but unfortunately as wide of a path that is, people can get around it with cars. And here in Westfield, when they were expanding the Midland Trace and there's still sections, a section of it, they don't have bollards restricting traffic to it so cars could possibly get onto it and they have so that creates a bit of a liability for the municipality and county. But here you can see the gravel paths, the people's backyards. the 4.7 mile marker so they obviously switched from the blue dots to the green signs in between the two different towns but it's hard to believe that on this trail I mean I was able to do just over eight miles and you know less than a half hour and you know that's really rare on a bicycle to be able to do that in, in my health condition when I was Reading more on the trail, it looked like the plans are for once the trail actually gets down to the state fairgrounds, um, there will be connector trails that connect with the Monon and then the Midland Trace should run completely over to this trail. So that would create a substantial loop to ride. Because um, the Monon from Sheridan down to Indianapolis at 10th Street is over, I think over 28 miles. And this one obviously is eight miles, but you'll throw in another probably nine miles, so 17 miles. And then whatever the side connector trails will be. It's the first time I've ever seen a lady pushing a baby carriage with rollerblades. <laughs>
Recently, I've been looking more into the Indiana's laws regarding e-bikes and then also other states. I found something that was one of the requirements for the e-bikes and they were required to have a sticker on the e-bike that said what class it was, what wattage of motor, and what um, top speed was. So the state of Indiana requires that to be on your bicycle and the manufacturer is supposed to do that. I'm not sure how many of these Chinese manufacturers actually do that. The uh, Curry e-bike I have I mean, from 2010, it has a plate on it that says it's a class one e-bike, but in 2010, they may have had slightly different um, classifications, but it, it should be a class two because it has a throttle. It does not accelerate past 15 or so though. So. But this one will go substantially faster. and has a larger motor. I also noticed that on this trail, although it was in the middle of the week and during the day, it seemed like lighter traffic than trails like the Monon. Of course, this one isn't as uh, established as the others trails, um, so there's obviously less traffic. But I would be curious to see what it's like on a weekend, especially in, in warmer weather as the summer builds up. Hopefully it's well used because the pavement and everything is just perfect. That little glitch in video was when the camera switched um, to another save file. It has about 16, 17 seconds gap between files when I set it to just continuously record. I guess they're advertising apartments for this section here. We're getting into downtown Fishers. Um, to the right, there's government buildings and things like that, which it's a pretty nice little government area. Um, there are also restaurants and, and shopping and bars. Lantern Road runs in front of a, you know, one of those shopping centers that has like a Home Depot and things, so it's a little busier. It's kind of weird to see after, you know, 10, 15 years, these little towns developing large enough to have parking structures like that on the left and right. <laughs> but they're working hard to build their downtown areas up. This section through here, the, right ahead is where the train station thing is. and the trail comes down to the left and down below. I know the train was originally supposed to go down to downtown Indianapolis, but I'm not sure where it goes. I'll have to look into that. Apologize for the snoring, that's my dog trying to sleep. doesn't seem to handle switching from 
darkness to light very well. It looks like you're walking into the light, as they say. Poor dog missed that squirrel. And the squirrel was smart and passed behind. I can definitely see these other fields and things being more subdivided for soon to be higher income houses, I'm sure. Oh, it's really starting to snore. Sorry about that. So here we have about two miles left, I guess. Thought that was interesting. People just put their uh, Adirondack chair sitting there right by the trail. I'm gonna have to build a sound studio, I guess. <laughs> Interrupting the poor dog's sleep. Do look forward to spring and summer when there will be a lot more green than brown. I'm sure the residents of these houses would prefer that too. Overall, this rail trail, it is kind of boring going down it because it's just a straight shot and not very much to look at. So. But I'd be interested, interested to ride the uh, Kokomo to Rochester section. I don't know if there's any plans to continue from Kokomo down to Noblesville or not. That'd be nice. It'd be a substantial section of trail. This is the intersection with 106th Street, so that would make it one more mile to go, but no, that's not the case, sorry. Maybe it is 106th Street. dogs. Mine 
Ryan's apparently happy because he's snoring away. It was just a smooth ride, just windy that day. If you had to get somewhere fast, this is the trail definitely to take. this intersection I ask these ladies if the trail continues down further past 96th Street but they say that it doesn't it just they failed to mention that it ends at a stop before 96th Street but that's not their fault Down here where the trail ends, um, there's just a sign that says trail closed or what have you. Um, so the trail is supposed to continue and then be complete down to the state fairgrounds, and I believe that's supposed to be at some time in 2025. The woman walking her dogs here, I guess they work for the VCA hospital that's right there at the end of the trail. I was confused slightly because there's... Uh, it must be their little kennel walking path for the people because there was women walking around smoking and I figured they were chained because or caged because they were smoking. But that was not the case. It was a veterinary hospital. So that's it for this trail. I hope you enjoy it. If you would, please like and subscribe. Um, feel free to leave a comment. I always re reply. So... Hope you have a good day. Thank you. And again, please like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching.